Hey folks, what's going on? Uh, back, second day in a row. The other video I made was one I didn't want to have to. This one, Heat Week, Arizona, week one. Starting off with the division early this year. Um, it's in the Bay, and... I mean, damn, what is there to say about Arizona? I mean, okay, so y'all... Got some pieces on your offense, but what have you really done defensive-wise? I mean, you drafted that Simmons kid, and all I keep hearing is, oh, he's going to stop George Kittle. He going to stop George Kittle. No. I don't see a rookie stopping George Kittle. I, I, yeah, no. Mm-mm. Not going to happen. Um, And not just that. And ain't George Kittle you guys going to have to worry about? It's Jordan Reed. And the reason I say that, he's healthy right now. I'm not saying he's going to stay healthy all season. I have no clue. But as long as he's healthy, the way he runs his routes is something y'all going to have to worry about. Um, I don't think Buddha could keep up with him. So, I'm not sure, you know, who you got that's going to keep up with Jordan Reed when we run our two tight end sets. And I'm also figuring, I'm also wondering who is going to become Patrick Peterson's new daddy. Because it used to be Crabtree. Crabtree was his daddy. I think every time we played y'all, well, you know, Crabtree was hurt a lot, but the games Crabtree played, I believe he averaged a touchdown a game against Patrick Peterson. So, um, will it be Brandon Ayuk? Will it be Debo? Because since Peterson's y'all's number one, in my opinion, dude's just a glorified punt returner. Then he'll probably be on Debo, which will let Ayuk work against one of the other scrubs y'all got over there. Uh, this could end up being a close game because of Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray's dangerous. There's no no getting around that. B-Hop, we all know what he could do. Um, you know, and if you're not and if we're not careful and watch Fitzgerald, Fitzgerald could do something too. But as far as defensive-wise, I'm not sure if y'all built up enough to keep up. I, I I really don't think so. Um, And then we had Trent Williams on the offensive line. And the last time Chandler Jones went up against him, he didn't do shit. So I think Trent Williams is going to hold it down. And, you know, Niners are going to do what we do. We're going to come out running the football. We're going to run play action, and we're just going to beat y'all, plain and simple. That's that's all there is to it. Until you guys prove that you're not basement dwellers, you're going to get treated as basement dwellers. You're going to get treated as red-headed stepchildren of the goddamn division. That's just all there is to it. Now, I do think y'all going to finish better than the Lambs this year, but that's not saying a lot. That's not a big accomplishment in my book. Um, but yeah, Niners going to beat Arizona. If we don't win by 14, then I'm going to be worried the rest of the season. Oh, my finger in the way. My bad. Fuck it. But if we, yeah, if we don't win by 14, I'm going to be worried the rest of the season. Arizona... Defense is trash. Offensive line's not very good either. I mean, I get it. Y'all drafted an offensive lineman, but is that dude good enough to to keep Kyler Murray from being the most sacked quarterback in the league? I don't think one guy is going to do it. Um, You know, and if he starts, and I believe he's a guard... Man, that, that kid going to get his lunch money eaten by DJ Jones. 
DJ Jones a fucking animal at nose tackle. And now that he's back this year because he was hurt last year, yeah, we, we good along that D-line. Our rotation's going to be nice. And, of course, we, st- we got a, you know, Bosa and Ford still there. And Ford seemed to be able to get to Kyler Murray last year in both games. So, yeah, I, I just don't see Arizona walking out with the dub this week. Um, we're going to start out 1-0. And then we'll go from there. But, you know, start knocking off division opponents early. Cool with me. And Arizona, y'all got to be the first victim. That's just how it is. You know, get mad at the schedule makers, not at me. That's just how it is. So, fuck Arizona. You know, fuck, yeah, fuck, fuck that entire franchise. Y'all are trash, and nothing's going to change about that. That's really all I got. Oh, I just wanted to touch on uh, my brother from another mother, uh, 4 9 cents video. Good-ass vid, fam. Saw that vid. Um, Just wanted to touch on his Jimmy G Easy video real quick about how Jimmy's y'all daddy, which is true. What, 3-0 against y'all? 1,100 yards, I believe, in those three games. Nine touchdowns to two interceptions. Yeah. Yeah. Jim, Jimmy going to go out there and, and, and fillet you bitches again. So, that's really all I got. And, you know, catch y'all bitches after the game. I'm out. San Francisco! Favorite. It's not just a slogan. It's a way of life. We're franchise and fan alike, faithful to an entire region known for its hardworking people, unique culture, ruggedly beautiful landscapes, and rich history. San Francisco, the most interesting city in the Union. The San Francisco 49ers have been faithful to the Bay since 1946. Loyalty never goes out of style. Times change, regions evolve, but the faithful never waver. 49ers fandom is passed down from one generation to the next. This is your grandmother's football team, but with a modern day attitude. Feels great, baby. We put on for our city and beyond. This is the land of red and gold and sterling silver. This is championship country. This is the capital of innovation. This is the Bay. And we're as faithful to you and this area as you are to this franchise. It's time for a new era. It's time to create new memories and new history. But all the new memories and new history just add to an established and evolving legacy. Nothing is replaced, only built on. And through it all, one thing remains constant. Faith. Our fans, our team, will always be faithful to the best.